in Pemberton, British Columbia. The whole reason I moved here was largely because of the creek in the backyard here. I wanted to find a place that was near to water and find a property that would allow me to express myself creatively and allow myself to be able to build things with my bare hands and be able to create a life that I've always dreamed of. I was around 10 years old and my parents thought that skiing would be something fun for the family. And so we would do a little family ski vacation once a year. Like my first day on skis, I got put in ski lessons and I was riding this little handle toe at Mount Washington. And I remember going up and I had this competitive nature in me because I'd see a kid going down and I wanted to beat him. So I'd get off the handle toe early, racing down to the bottom <laughs> and then go up and I just had this thing where I wanted to be the fastest kid on the handle toe. And I remember trying to tree ski on skis that were this long and uh, just wallowing in you know, three feet of snow. But I love that element of just being able to lob through the trees like that. Cause there's really nothing else that we can experience as humans where you can just rip through trees like that, you know, on the super smooth and soft surface. And so immediately I was hooked. And so I did that until I was 14, just skiing a few days a year. And then my parents heard about this ski resort up at Hemlock Valley. They thought it'd be cool to put us in a ski club. During that time, I became infatuated with, with Ski Magazine and, and Powder Magazine. And I would literally cut out every photo that I thought was rad and put it on my wall. My whole wall was just covered with cutouts. One of my first influencers would have been Trevor Peterson, which is pretty rad because Kyle lives next door here. But I, I actually drew Trevor in my art class in grade eight. When I first moved to Whistler in 98, I was watching all these guys like J.P. Eau Claire and Shane Zox and Douglas and Vinny, the whole Canadian Air Force, throwing these brand new tricks that we had never seen before. And so I quickly realized I need to spend more time jumping in the train park on Blackcomb. And through that transition, just started honing that skill and just doing laps in the park and then rotting pipe. And back then, we were competing in pipe, slope, and big air, and so I just got onto that tour and competed with some regional events, which then led to the US Open and then to X Games. And then as soon as I had the opportunity to start filming with Poor Boys and MSP in the backcountry, that's when my mind got blown, and I realized that being in the backcountry was, was my place. And that was a true place for me to be able to express myself creatively. And I was so fortunate to be able to spend time with JP and Julian and Bornowski, who really took me under their wings, taught me how to sled, how to build a jump, which then led me to the opportunity of going heli skiing in Bella Coola, and from there my, my life was forever changed. And my favorite aspect of being in the Sea to Sky Corridor is the community here. It's like-minded individuals that like to seize the day, live a healthy life, live life to the fullest. That's kind of what I want to surround myself with. In the summertime, I can go biking, kiting, climbing, swimming. In the wintertime, we've got some of the best terrain in the world here. And 365 days a year, there's always something rad that you can do with people that you enjoy spending your time with. This place in Pemberton has definitely been a bit of an artistic project for myself and a place where I could kind of create my little utopia. The Pemberton Valley grows a lot of food, organic food. And I wanted to have that close connection to good, clean food. There's clean water here, clean air, and there's great shredding here. And those are all aspects of my life that I really, really appreciate. I've always wanted a tree house, so I built a tree house, built a, a greenhouse just so we could grow food for as many months here as possible. And then in my side yard, I built a little Japanese Zen garden. And so if you walk around the property, there's a lot of different aspects that I feel all helped enrich my life. One of the first things I wanted to do here was build a sauna. And then I learned about the benefits of having cold water, so I built these pools here. So you could jump from the sauna into the cold pool and then get back in the sauna and then finish off the whole experience with a nice shower. One of the great things about this property here is that I've got a bike trail that goes up this trail called Fat Tug. And so that bike trail also translates to a ski touring trail. And so last winter I had the opportunity to go ski touring up into this boulder field that's just above the top of the bike trail. 
And it was something I've been looking at for 10, 12 years now. And finally got to put some tracks down this crazy undulated boulder field. And it was such a rad feeling just to be able to leave the backyard, click into your skis, walk up, shred some pow all the way back down to my back door here, and then hop in the sauna. It was, it was the perfect day. I switched my truck from running on diesel to vegetable oil. And so with that, I go to local restaurants, collect their old deep frying oil, bring it back here, clean it, and then put it into my truck. And that's had a huge reduction in the amount of CO2 that my truck puts out. And, uh, and it's just made me stoked on just creating my own fuel. I'm not reliant on, on anybody else for myself to get around. And that's just a super good feeling. Braylorn is an old mining town that used to, I believe there was 10 to 20,000 people living up here. And then mining slowed down and now it's just 68 locals that are still living here. So right here we have the geodesic dome. And the whole idea was to be able to bring this dome to different locations. And when I had the opportunity to bring it up to the Braylorn Adventure Lodge, I couldn't say no just because of access to zones, access to the spa, and, uh, and it's a place that's relatively close to home, so it's pretty easy for me to access. Being that my buddies own the lodge here, they've got nine acres, so I just asked them if I could camp out in the backyard here. <laughs> and uh, now I've been camped out here for just about two years. So this is the interior of the dome. We've got the kitchen right here. Wood stove, drying rack, futon, pull-out couch and couch. And then I've got a couple futons over here. And then I've got my, my closet storage over here for gear and whatnot. And then we just built this loft, which is amazing because it's pretty much doubled our square footage. And so now I've got a queen and a twin up there. Last year we had seven people standing here. It's super comfortable. Skiing is a place where I find a lot of happiness and joy, but also just a lot of peace. A lot of the reasons why I go skiing now is just because I love being in that, that beautiful environment that we get to go hang out in. And I think that's just a huge aspect of my life is I'm always trying to find appreciation with where I am and who I'm with. It's crazy to think that I've been doing this now since I was 18 consistently and I'm 39 now how's that and it's been a trip to see you know all the different generations coming in and then moving on and somehow I'm still riding this wave right now <laughs> just kind of riding the whitewash to the beach here buddy <laughs> you know my biggest thing with skiing at this point is just continuing to have as much fun as possible. Pretty, pretty plain and simple. That's what I'm trying to accomplish in life, is just having as much fun and just having a smile on my face every day. And you know, I realized that after having a knee injury, being off snow for a while, and my first day getting back on snow, and I was going down a blue square run, there's five CMs of pow, but it was smooth and soft. And at that point, I realized that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. I don't need to be doing anything crazy to feel fulfilled, you know? So it's a simple goal, man. Just shred a little bit of power every day and I'll be a happy man.